Hey everyone, um, I got a little bit of uh, additional capture hardware here for my setup. I wanted to do a, a, a quick talk about why it is that I chose this cheap camera as opposed to one that's like 700 bucks or, or way more. Um, this camera here, I paid 167 bucks for it with free shipping. Then I came along and I spent $26 on the 0.5x adapter because the camera would be like way zoomed in. Even at 0.5x, it's still way zoomed in. You don't get as much um, on the screen as you get through your eyepieces. Um, so anyways, I can't spend a lot of money on this. Um, I went with this setup because I wanted to be able to upgrade it and kind of change and add on to it later. Um, this camera will do HDMI output as well as USB 2.0 output. So, you know, I wanted to get something that I could use right now. And for the budget that I had, and after looking all around, this was pretty well it for me. So I knew I could plug in USB 2 and use this thing right now. Yeah, the video is going to be laggy. It's going to be compressed. It won't have the quality that it could have. Excuse me. Um, but I could plug it in and use it right now. And then later on, I'm actually just going to, you know, I'm going to do HDMI capture. But, you know, that that's some more money that I have to spend on that hardware. So later on, I can buy the HDMI capture hardware. I'm not sure how it would work through USB 3. That's probably the way I'm going to go to start with. Um, or PCI Express, we'll see. But either way, once I get that hardware, I can do HDMI out of this camera directly into capture, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a way better frame rate. Uh, plus, whenever you're using this camera in that way, there's a lot of adjustments as far as white balance and exposure and, and stuff like that. So it's still not as good as a camera as, as like the OptiX cam that you see some of the more popular people online using, but it's a camera that fit my budget. So one thing that I did before this camera came um, this Amscope microscope that I'm using is not simulfocal, which means in order for me to show you the image through this camera, I have to sacrifice my left eye, which royally sucks. Um, I did a little practicing before this camera came in, you know, pulled the thing on my microscope and cut my left eye, and man, oh man, you're most likely not going to catch me doing uh, touch ICs on customer boards or any real BGA rework with only one eye because you don't have that depth perception. And you know you can you can kind of feel with with your tweezers and and tell where you're at, but with uh, work that is as tedious, you don't have the opportunity to do any feeling. You have to be right on. You do any feeling, you're probably going to cost yourself a couple hours of misery. So um, I'm looking at spending uh, I guess about 300 bucks. I can get a simulfocal microscope head that'll fit on this same kind of rickety flimsy crappy stand but it'll be simulfocal and I'll get both eyes and be able to show you what's going on so I'm gonna be adding a couple more things to this setup I'm gonna be adding HDMI capture I'm switching over to a simulfocal microscope so that I can do my job in comfort and show you what's going on um, so I can kinda of, I bought this camera because I can kinda of piece on and, and upgrade as I go um, I'm probably gonna wind up with at least two complete setups out of this deal because I, once I get my HDMI capture and my simulfocal, the next thing I'm gonna be going for, aside from maybe upgrading some tools, is a way better camera. Um, I'm not sure what the frame rate's gonna be on this through the HDMI port. I have hooked it straight up to my 24 inch monitor or whatever size that monitor is. I have hooked it straight up to that with HDMI and dude, it is way better through HDMI than you're gonna get through USB 2, but you know, that's my budget. So um, just a quick talk on, on why I chose this. Um, you can't see it in that camera view, but this crappy adapter that came with this Amscope microscope, it's really hard to adjust up and down. You gotta loosen it and then move it up and down and, the, and then tighten it. So what I wound up doing is find kind of a, a mid-range sweet spot for it. Um, and then, so I'll, I'll focus it here. And once it's clear there, I'll kind of fine tune it through the eyepiece so that you're in focus and I'm in focus. So, you know, it's it's a lot better than what I was using, but it, it, it still needs improved upon quite a bit. Um, so anyway, you can't see the tape that I've added here. I added some black tape here because this adapter that came with this microscope, um, it, it leaves a slot open where dust can get in. And any of you that's ever replaced an iPad mini screen or an iPad screen and not taped it all the way around, dust will find its way into this thing. I, I don't care if there's an opening anywhere, dust is getting in it. So um, there's a little bit of tape on there, but overall for the money I spent, between the adapter and the camera, I'm not counting the microscope, I spent 200 bucks on this adapter and camera. It's, it's, it's really not bad. Um, let me show you what the quality of it looks like. I got an iPhone 5C board under the microscope here, which by the way, don't have any underfill on it, and it also doesn't have touch disease. 
So, so here's what I'm looking at. I'm going to cut off the left eye and um, let's see. Let's give you what this looks like. Did I cut? Oh, I went the wrong way. So anyway, cut off the left eye. Um, here's an iPhone 5C board that has no underfill under this whole entire top area. Um, some of them, some of the 5C boards have underfill, some of them don't. I think the same is true on the 5S, some do, some don't, but I'm not 100% sure on those because I haven't had to do touch ICs on the 5S. I have done it on a couple of 5Cs, so maybe this underfill crap does have something to do with it. That's all beside the point. This video here is to demonstrate this microscope. I'm actually, today I'm going to be going after TriStar IC, which we have here. And um, yeah, there might be some people out there who can solder without depth perception but I'm not one of them guys so I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle this for the sake of this YouTube channel however I will be upgrading this as time allows um, I'm gonna up do a frame rate upgrade first by going with the HDMI capture um, but I've got to get a simulfocal microscope head on this stand because this is gonna make my life miserable hell and I'll probably only use it like this if I absolutely have to to do a demonstration on a video. Um, you just really can't do this kind of work without depth perception. When I first started doing this, I was using a digital microscope and I was soldering looking at the screen. And a lot of the work that I did during that time, you know, six, seven months later, it came back. And I looked at it under my good microscope and it's like, oh shit, I charged them for that. So um, I wind up. You know, I wind up fixing it under warranty, so um, that's what I got for soldering with a cheap digital microscope looking at a monitor. Um, it's just no comparison to this. I know looking at the image that's on my screen right now, there's no way that I could look at that and do a good job soldering. I also know there's there's no way that I'm going to do it with one eye because you know my right eye is kind of my bad eye anyway. I definitely ain't doing it without my left one, but without your two eyes, you know, you, even though you can see a clear image, you can't tell where you're at, like this way. You can tell where you're at this way, but you don't know how high you are off the board. Now, I've tried it. I, I tried to sit and do a, a Mason Touch IC with one eye. No way. Just There's just no way. I, I wouldn't do that to a customer's board. I'm almost guaranteed to bump something that I'm not supposed to bump. And when you're doing this kind of work, just a little bump is going to be a real pain in the neck. So um, that's kind of why I chose this hardware and not the $700 alternative. I'm not rich enough to dump an extra, you know, if I were to buy the, the OptiX cam, um, you know, capture hardware, you know, I'm already getting a thousand bucks there for something decent. Um, and then I'm looking at needing simulfocal as well, so there's another 300 bucks. I'm looking at another 1300 bucks to beef up the quality of this YouTube channel, and that's not counting the camera that's in front of my face. Um, I've, I've got some other camera equipment that's going to help really brighten up the colors this way, um, and just a lot of stuff I'm working on to, to try to improve this so I can show what I'm doing, but I have to kind of choose the best of both worlds, quality versus budget versus return on investment. You know, it, it's all in there. You you can't justify spending that kind of money without some sort of an immediate return. So um, anyways, the other cameras I got, I got some 1080p stuff to shoot this way. Um, USB 2 on most of those and it's just, uh, it, it's laggy. You just, you cannot get the voice in time with the video. I tried for about an hour and a half this morning and I said, fuck it. And I went back to the internal camera on my laptop, which you can tell I'm talking to you on a laptop if I move the lid. Um, so anyways, that's why I chose this camera. No underfill on a 5C board. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.